I love Duke a lot, but he is like a so. Perfect time for her living in there. have a bunch of dice but it's like the ones I use the most are the A team <laughs> and then there's the B team and then there's like a little cup of spare dice on my table for people who want to play but you didn't bring dice do you get your nice dice? um sometimes I lend my nice dice out to like friends <laughs> picked out, I just haven't added them to D&D &D Beyond. Mm. Just because... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. It doesn't, doesn't seem like I should have any spells. It's going to take a long run. I haven't meditated. I don't have a big connected with the
I had a bunch of adventures. Like they were tasked to clear out a haunted house full of ghosts. Uh, there were no ghosts. <laughs> it was just uh, kobolds who had made a bunch of traps. I like that. So it was like kind of like a Halloween, like cheesy haunt kind of deal. Um, but everything was a deadly trap made by kobolds. And there was a hole in the floor. <laughs> I had all my audio sources muted, so that's weird. Welcome back to Descend into Avernus, everybody. My face is a little big on this one. So, without fur before we get started, do obviously channel announcements and stuff. Uh, applications for our Forgotten Realms campaign, Hearts of Madness, end on Wednesday, so... If you're looking to get in on that campaign, you can drop an application off in our Discord. Uh, the links to whatever you need to find are in there, so... It's that. Application closed Wednesday, so... Get to it. Um, what else? Soldiers of the Lotus Queen will return next Sunday, because our DM for that is currently on a field trip. So that must be fun for him. Um, so we'll be back next Sunday with Soldiers of the Lich Queen, and then after Soldiers of the Lich Queen, we're recording a special episode of Demystifying DMing for our podcast networks on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, where Sam, who runs Demystifying DMing and is the DM for Soldiers of the Lich Queen, is going to be doing our first DM interview for the podcast, and it'll be me that he's interviewing and talking to about being a dungeon master and stuff, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you want to come in and hear two guys talk about Dungeons and & Dragons and how they DM, come check it out. And if you want to learn about my process and my secrets that I do for games, come check it out. I won't be spilling too many beans, but come check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. That said, last time, you guys attempted to sneak into the Van Thampoor Villa in Baldur's Gate. Um... You guys scouted the area out a little bit, saw that it was guarded, protected by about a 15-foot-tall stone wall around the perimeter. Uh, and Kelsey was the first to go kind of scout the place out by their lonesome. Hopped over the wall, scurried in, and long story short, attacked by imps, rendered unconscious, and dragged into the prison cells below the, below the villa. Not long after, Salen and Mortis climbed over the wall with rope, also got into Van, Th Van Thampoor Villa, and also, long story short, attacked by imps, and rendered unconscious. The party awoke in the prison cells beneath the manor, uh, or beneath the villa, imprisoned by what appeared to be a devil with weird tentacle beard. Uh... Antagonizing the devil and working together, you guys broke out of the prison and in and instead locked the devil in a prison cell before making uh, your escape to go find your uh, equipment that, that was taken. You found your equipment through a secret door thanks to the rescuing of an individual known as Falister Fisk who had a map of the entirety of the villa and took you to said secret room that he found. You guys took your equipment back, but he alerted the presence of the matriarch of the Van Thampoor family. And she came in and started kicking ass. But you guys stabbed her a bunch. 
and she died. After she died, you guys carried on and encountered a strange individual, a human man who was quite portly, uh, and noticed that his shadow wasn't matching his human body somehow. You saw a winged short fiend casting a shadow on the wall. Um, after realizing the man was kind of a coward and didn't really want to deal with you guys at all and was crying and sobbing about his predicament in the basement, in the treasure room, whatever room it was, the vault, so to speak, you guys also noticed a shield on the wall that seemed to interest the female you rescued from the cells, the elderly woman, uh, that was about 70 years old. She, rec she uh, mentioned that the shield that was on the wall was very important to her. Her name was Satir Thion Hoon. And uh, you guys took the shield as well before leaving that room. And that's what we're going to pick up. I'm so tired. I'm in so much pain. Yeah, um, so what, what if... I just want to lock myself in the secret room where we found our stuff and just hang out for a little bit. I'm very into idea. That sounds like a good idea. Uh. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of questions for Shadow Guy in the next room, but... And then so we gotta like... get out of this place. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um... Well, where would you like to have this little nap? The secret room seems probably safest, no? Yeah, I mean, that was where they were hiding our stuff, but I don't really want... I, I don't know anywhere else in this place. Um, the secret room might be best, yes. <laughs> I can see that we can set it. We can probably set it up so we're covered on one side anyway. Mm -hmm. True. True. All right. Take turns keeping watch. Yeah, that could be best. You all look like poop, sort of. Don't really want any of you dying down here. I could very well still die down here. Oh, wonderful! It was so, so hard. Well, back to the secret room, and he starts to trail off back down the tunnel towards the secret room and. Slips inside. Perfect. Mortis follows along right behind him. Okay, definitely. So, you guys get back to the secret room. Mm -hmm. Alright, I can take first shift if everybody is fine with. Uh, I'll, yeah. take, I'll take second. Okay. So, I'm just wondering if uh, maybe we could take this uh, altar thing, and maybe we can just kind of lock the door with it. Um, oh, bar door? Is it, yeah, is it movable? Uh, you could, you can try moving the altar. Alright, let's try to move altar. I'm gonna assist him. Okay, the altar is made, just to uh, remind everybody, the altar is made of obsidian. So it's black, there's tiny infernal runes carved into a ring around a okay. nine inch tall angel shaped flame erupting from the top. Oh, before we move, can I try to scratch out runes with dagger? Sure. You gotta scratch out one of the runes with your dagger. Uh, it ex the flames extinguish. And the altar cracks into two pieces. Oh, perfect. Easier to move now. That was a good idea. I would have liked to have a read of those runes, though. I mean, I'm sure you can still read them. Yeah, we'll leave it for later. I'm too tired for this crap now. Mm -hmm. Alright, let us move pieces of obsidian bricks. Okay. Uh, Mortis and Kelzu, what are each of your carrying capacity? Like, how much, you can, how much you can drag... If you click it's literally on, no idea. If you click on your equipment, it should tell you how much you can drag, lift, push. 
equipment. We click on encumbrance, I believe. Uh, I am 510 pounds. Uh, is your strength score yeah. multiplied by 15? Okay, my strength is 10. So, uh, if, 10 if you, times 15. Yes, yeah, so if you click on weight carried uh, on, in your equipment, it'll tell you uh, push, drag, or lift. So, yeah, Mortis, you can push, drag, or lift 510 pounds. Holy moly. <laughs> well, that's what you get when you're working out in the army every day. Uh, so, Mortis, you get the idea that. If this altar hadn't split in two, it would not be moving. That was a smart idea breaking that uh, altar. So thank you. All. You get the idea that one of these sections that you're carrying is about four hundred pounds. Oh, that should be more than enough to block up. And he just starts pulling on one of the pieces of obsidian and dragging it to the door. Okay. I can drag three hundred pounds worth of stone. Um, why don't you come and give me a hand? See, I'll give you a hand. Okay. You see kind of Mortis pretending to have a little bit of trouble with it? Okay, cool. <laughs> come and, why don't you come and help me? Let right. me help it. Say you push the chunks of, ul of the altar in front of the door. The secret door. The secret door is now secure. Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh. I rhyme. <laughs> Uh, and then Falister sits down and says, So, the reason I am here, uh, well, I am here to find a magic puzzle box with a contract inside that the Thavius <laughs> Krieg, the man we met in the treasure room, the vault, he apparently struck a that bargain with an archdevil, and apparently the contract is inside that puzzle box. So, she wants me to obtain this as proof of his crimes. And she thinks she can open this such puzzle box and is willing to pay for it in gold or magic items. Oh. Ooh. I see, before you had said those words, I was going to tell you is not my business. But now it's sounding a little bit like perhaps my business. Yes, I believe it is somewhere upstairs probably somewhere dark and dangerous and trapped by a bunch of bastards oh uh, maybe not i think it just might be in the care of one of the family members oh i mean uh correct me if i'm wrong and and not to not to to, to to be a big bummer about it but i feel like there's only one of those left exactly so and we're gonna go away to kill him we're doing great is what I'm saying. Yes. So find them. He might have. He most likely. They most likely have it in their possession. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. a stick one. They are very easy to kill. Now, my map depends does. On... Oh, sorry. Continue. Oh, I was just gonna say. Uh, depends how many of those imps are still around. Oh, it's very good point. Thank you. The big dumb brother was saying that the little smart brother had a bunch of them. Ah, oh, that is unfortunate. Um, well, mm -hmm. I think a nap is in order. We can figure everything out after we wake up in, you know, eight hours or so. I agree. All right, so everyone can take a long rest. Nice. Bless. And right, who's taking first watch? I shall. Okay. Um. Give me a perception check. Yes, Thor. Eight. Eight. It's a rather relatively quiet first watch. Yeah. You, you, you want to do anything specific during your half of the watch? Nope, just watching, waiting to go to bed so I can heal up. Okay. Hmm. Um... All right. Who's second watch? I will be. All righty. Uh, yeah, so you, Kelzu, drifts off. And then Good Mort night. Mortis, you wake up. Uh, uh, perception check for your watch. <laughs> oh, that's cocked. <sighs> Oh, 
Uh oh, shit. Uh, six. Again, it's a relatively quiet half of your watch. Do you choose to do anything during your watch specifically? Um, yes, actually. While he is awake, he has actually um, got his shield out. Mm -hmm. And he has his hammer and he has his uh, dagger. And you can see that the um, his shield, it used to have a massive uh, hammer with a, a dawning ray, dawn's rays coming from it. Okay. Uh, it was, and it's, you can tell the shield is old. It's been with him since, like, before he even came to um, the city. And you see him, you can see part of the, part of the, uh, the hammer has been defaced by an etching of a spiral that starts in the middle and starts going out. It's only got a couple of curls on it. So for the few hours while he's awake, he's going to take his hammer and his dagger, and he's going to just start putting a few more, just defacing the shield, putting a few more uh, whorls on that spiral. Okay, cool. Uh, and that will take the rest of your watch, uh, which will bring it to Salem, who only needs mm -hmm. four hours. That's right. Yeah, and I've just been, like, sitting in the corner, just kind of meditating and just thinking about my life and how I got here. Okay. And then I'll take my watch. All right, perception check. Oh, that's cop. I just try to hold extra dice in my dice tray and then it doesn't work ever. Okay. Ah, uh, that's better. That's going to be uh, 17 plus 4. Oh, uh, nice. So, yeah, 21. Uh, so you kind of wake up from your trance. Uh, you see mm -hmm. Mortis kind of just sort of fall asleep. Everyone else is kind of resting. Um, that said, you hear what sound like a do half a dozen humanoid voices chanting an infernal coming mm. beyond the wall right about if I flip it on the map, oh, right about wow. here. Not too far away, but a little, a couple paces uh, north of you, through the wall, you can hear humanoid voices chanting. Through the wall. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, can I? Since I'm up. Ooh. Try to just search this. Um wall and see if there's any like another secret entrance or anything like that sure um uh that's not going to be quite so good is that an investigation yes it's just an eight an eight you do not f you like run your hands along the wall uh but you can't find exactly um where this door might be okay well i'm just gonna keep a good eye out on that oh, uh, re-roll that it's a perception check sorry oh it's a perception check yep. um i mean i can keep the roll and just add a five okay what would that be then uh that would be eight plus five and that would be 13. 13 cool mm -hmm. You would actually find the door right here in this oh. wall. <laughs> oh, um, oh. gosh, everyone really needs this rest, but they are chanting. Um, that said, because you did get four hours of your trance, you will mm -hmm. you would have gotten the benefits of a long rest, and everyone else is probably almost there. Okay. Um, I'm just going to keep a really good eye on that door. Okay. And wait for people to wake up. All right. So you keep, you spend the rest of your watch keeping your eye on that door. And a couple hours pass and everybody gets the benefits of a long rest and wakes up. Cool. 
And at this point, you all can kind of hear the chanting. And it's oh, all... Sounds good. <laughs> it's all in Infernal. Can anyone understand Infernal? Um... I think I actually do. Okay. I do not. Uh, let me just check and make sure it's not Abyssal. Yep, uh, I know Infernal. Okay. Um, you can kind of discern that uh, those who are the chanting is praising Heap upon their, their uh, they're heaping praise upon the Archdevil Zariel for her tireless effort to win the Blood War. Oh, I love her. I know, I also love her. Huge <laughs> fan. Out of character, huge fan. Right. I know, I know, same. Um, so I'm just gonna, like, uh, Salem is just gonna go to her allies and be like, <clears throat> guys, that's it, guys, guys, guys. That. Yes, that. So, uh, long story short, learned Infernal uh, as, uh, you know, a, a teen in my 60s to um, piss off my parents. Cool. I feel that. Yeah, no, it was a choice between that and Abyssal, and I flipped a coin. Um, so, anyways, uh, but there's something bad happening in the next room, and there is a secret door here. You see, so, uh, you see, uh, fellas, you're kind of pulling a map. Oh, yes, the secret door right there. Don't open it then, maybe? Why not? I mean, I don't think they're out. Interrupt this ritual, whatever they're doing. Oh, they could be summoning a fiend, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, um, I, I just I knew that if we tried to interrupt the ritual when you know you weren't rested, we would probably all die. Oh, for sure. Uh, so instead of only maybe one or two. So okay. Um, I do want to find that puzzle box, but um. Mm -hmm. If this is the way we do it, then I am for it. Yeah, I mean, they're heaping praise upon uh, Zeriel. Oh, not yeah. good. No, not good. Uh, DM, would I know if that's like a summoning thing or? Um, it doesn't sound like a summoning thing. It just sounds like they're praising this devil. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know if they're actively summoning a devil, but it's bad, whatever the news. Like, uh, not a fan, not like. Can I make a religion check to see if I know who this Archmage Zariel is? Uh, Archdevil? Or Archdevil Zariel? Yes, thank you. Uh, sure. Uh, seven. Uh, you might have heard about her name in passing, but that's about it. Well, I mean, we were told to, at one point, to wipe out all the uh, followers of these demons. Yeah, and what are we? We were just just me and Mortis. Yeah. Okay. This was before. That's why we were in the basement. They see. Mm -hmm. I mean, a few more heads might bring a few more gold. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I mean, me personally does not want to get ambushed by cultists ever. That's why you get the ambush on them first. You get the ambush by the input. Not fun for me. Well, um, I, I don't know what. To, I feel like I don't know. Uh, you all choose what you want to do. Why don't we? Why don't we do this? Why don't we do this the way we did this kind of thing in the army? I've never done a thing in the army ever. Uh, same. I'm a spy. Uh, what I was going to suggest is I could... Wait, what you see, you see Mortis reach into a pocket, and you see him pull out 
a gold coin. Oh. Heads, we take them out. Tails, we head straight upstairs and hit hit the puzzle box. Everyone agreed? Because I want to take them out. My suggestion, I can maybe sneak through the secret door as like a little bug or something um, and see how many there are. You get the idea you won't be able to sneak through because it's just a wall that kind of actually hits, is touching the ground and the ceiling. Never mind, there's no crack. Stupid, forget I said that. I do have a coin to flip, should you guys want to flip a coin? Ooh. I mean, out of character, I really want to flip a coin. Oh, I will let Mortis flip a coin because he has one. All right, flip your coin. All right. Tails. I didn't realize they actually put tails on these things. Hmm. And he slips the gold pot, gold coin back into his pocket. Guess we're heading upstairs. Oh, wonderful. I know two uh, entrances to get upstairs. Perfect. Uh, hey, buddy with the map. Yeah. Uh, is there another entrance out of that room? Uh, the one that the voices are coming from? Yes. Uh, judging on my map, there is a secret door on the west wall and a set of doors, like actual doors, on the north wall. Oh. Oh. I was hoping we could maybe just lock them in this room, but I don't know if we got enough. For that. I imagine they know the end. They also know how to get to the secret doors. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Fair enough. Know. All right. Let's, uh, uh, well, the coin says to go upstairs, and I trust the coin. All right. Um, okay. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> my map is telling me the one entrance is through this secret door ahead of us, but the other entrance we can get to relatively easy without any problems. Hmm. I hope. Uh, do we maybe want to let that weird person out of the room? I don't. That's Thavius Krieg, uh, the man hmm. I was here to look for. I don't hmm. want to let him out. Oh. If we can, yeah, if, just in case he did sign a contract with an archdevil. Yeah. He looked. He looked a little. I got a bad feeling off him. I think there might be something bad about him. Oh, that definitely most likely is. Um, but since we are kind of acquaintances at this point in being, I assume trust might be in order. Um. I mean, yeah. I've been trusting all of you this whole time. Um. I have a very good friend of mine who sent me here. Her name is Silvira Savikas. Um, she is a tiefling and an expert on the Nine Hells. Um, if we can find this puzzle box, we mm -hmm. can go find her in Candle Keep. Um, and she can basically give us all the next steps on where to go and what to do oh. and how to deal with all of these. Uh, she's been monitoring devil activity in Baldur's Gate and El Terrell, the city that fell. Uh, for months, so she wants this uh, this puzzle box. So I think if you all bring this puzzle box to her, a hefty reward would be in on in order. Those sound like a wonderful set of words. Plus, I, I'd very much like to get out of Baldur's Gate for a little bit. I mean, color me interested. I uh, very much prefer to not have to be coming up with plans myself. I'm much better at the whole having target pointed out and then dealing with target. You know? All right. Uh, I don't, but your thing sounds imper uh, important, Falster. Excellent. Follow me, everybody. And he just kind of steps out into the hallway and starts going to the east. Uh, DM. Yes. Uh, you know what? Nope. She's a trusting gal, so I'm not gonna do insight. Sure. So, yep, let's let's go. Alright. As Mortis, you can see Mortis is definitely ready in case he's got his weapon out, and he's ready in case any enemies pop out to get a surprise right. attack. So I will just copy your tip. I will move your tokens to where you'll end up. Cool. And you guys, yeah, you're walking on. He's like, so... Hmm. 
How are you all liking Baldur's Gate? It's fine. It's been a it's been a few weeks since I got here, and it's uh, I have to say it's kind of a shithole of a city. Oh yeah, it's currently has some problems. Yeah, um, yeah, makes sense. A lot of places have problems. Yeah, well, it's not. Uh, to be fair, I kind of have a different. Uh, I kind of have a different view of everything. I'm used to dwarven cities, and they tend to be much more cleaner and less demon infested. Oh, that could put a different perspective on things. Yes. All right. Yeah, I grew up here, and I had no idea it was like this. <laughs> Well, judging you, did you come from, you? did you, by any chance you come from the um, upper district of Baldur's Gate? Yeah. The low town district is yeah. kind of not so good. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we went to that bar in a boat. That was pretty cool. Oh. It was a pretty cool bar. I had lots of fun there. Oh, interesting. Yeah, fun. Um... So as you guys are walking through these sewer tunnels, uh, there's a very thick smell of incense. Um, oh, there are smooth stone fingers cut into the floors that channel water and waste f uh, f toward, like down. Um, the trenches are about four feet wide and three feet deep, with arch arcing stone bridges spanning them at irregular intervals. And there are there is a ledge on either side of this trench that is three feet wide, so you can, you can easily walk single file without walking around in the sewer water. And eventually he brings you to a door and says, So, uh, through here, uh, there we're going to find, well, there will be a staircase that will lead us right upstairs. Great. Wow. Why, don't, why don't we let our uh, sneakers go first? Great. All right. He I will any, still any, go any, forward. Any Can I keep my ears down for any flapping sounds? Make a perception check. <laughs> it's only nine. You do not hear anything. All right, now I will stealth up. Okay, give me a stealth check. Yes, 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 yes of course. Oh, it's... oh, wait, wait, wait. Hey, I'm not. Do, 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 do. Oh, sorry, never mind. Keep going. Is twenty-seven. Cool. You approach the door as quietly as possible. Do you open it? Yes, of course. I'm I'm going through it very sneakily. Okay. Overall. So you reveal a room. There are no stairs in this room. There are. Uh, there are stairs in this room. I couldn't see them right away. Um, four stone pillars brace the ten foot high vaulted ceiling of this dry cellar. The walls of which are lined by a dozen barrels on wooden braises. Half the barrels have brass spigots tapped into them. The room also contains two stacks of wooded crates, one in the middle of the room and another by the south wall. Uh, and you also notice um, that uh, there's a door on the other side as well. What's in that door, Mr. Man with Map? Uh, the map says Wine Cellar. Anybody want some wine? I'm always up for a drink. I mean, okay. Mortis. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, yeah, I don't really want a, a drink right now, but I do like the idea of taking wine um, from this horrible family. Yes, have wine for later. Mortis is going to, uh, first thing he's going to do, he's going to walk into here and he is going to close his eyes for a minute. Okay. He's going to reach out and he's going to use his divine senses to see if he can find any undead, any fiends, uh, within Sweet. 60. So j just as you all enter this room and you cast, you're starting to do your divine sense. <laughs> The crates in the middle of the room burst open. Fuck. Uh -oh. And three Fuck. little 
uh, fiends pop up out of the crates. They look very similar to the fiend that was kind of sat on that guy's shoulder, Amor, that you guys killed in the mm. tavern. And I need everybody to roll initiative. Great. As they burst out of the crates and attack you guys on sight. And oh, you can see the fun. crates there and had little eye knot holes in them that they were peering out of. This family sucks. Family uh, so much. That was out of character, but like, yeah. Oh, I had to drop my already attack to... Ugh. Uh... Alright, I will go through and ask everybody what they got in a moment. For now, I roll their initiative. Oh, natural 20. Hmm. Well, Great. this elf girl is closer than I am. Alright, and then... Oh, I need... I am happy about that. And she gets a... Oh, come on. Alrighty, what? Oh, I got you guys to the thing. Boop. Boop. Oof. Boop. Okay, what did Mortis get for initiative? A... 17. Okay, Salen. Uh, I got a 14. And Kelzu. You got a 12. Okay. So, one of these devils immediately flies forward towards Salen, the closest mm -hmm. one it can get to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's going to make two attacks at you. It's going to attack with its bite first, try to like bite you on the face, or bite okay. you on the neck. Uh, that is a 12 to hit. Oh, my armor class is 13! <laughs> so you like swat it away with the back of your hand, because these guys are like tiny size <laughs> fiends, so... Oh, okay, just, okay. Whap at the back of your hand. Uh, and then it's going to go for a... A stab with its little tiny fork that it has. Ah. Like its little, like, devil pitchfork. Yeah, he remembers. Uh, <laughs> no, that is a five to hit. Ooh. So you, like, just keep swatting it, like, get away from me. Yeah. Um, and then one of the other ones is going to fly towards Mortis oh. and do the same thing. Repeat. A bite and a... Actually, no. Bring it on. Bring it on, you bastard. It's going to go... Yeah, no, it's going to go for a bite and a fork attack. So the bite is a 17 to hit. Nope. It goes to bite you, and you just kind of, like, whap it with your shield. Uh, and then it's going to go for the fork attack. No, that's a 13 to hit. So you, it kind of, like, stuns it, and it goes forward with the fork, and it just kind of stabs into your shield. Uh, that'll bring it to you, Mortis. Uh, you little fucker, why don't you try this on for a hat? And he's going to bring his Warhammer down just on top of its head. Make an attack roll. Uh-huh. That is 14. 14 hits, roll damage. Yes! Is this Witcher battle music? Yes, it is. Oh my nice. god, I want to that game so bad. We uh, could go halvesies on it. CD Projekt Red gave me permission to use their music. I Those asked my mom awesome. if she would buy it for me, and she said she would, so I'm sure I can get $40 out of her. So, <laughs> oh, heck yeah. What did you get for damage? Uh, that is a nine for damage. Just right on top nine. of it. Alrighty. So you swing your weapon at this thing and you crack it along the little tiny face that it has. <laughs> um, but you get the idea that it didn't do the full amount. Almost like it's resistant to something. All right. You really want to do this? Then let's do this. And he's gonna push. He's gonna. I'm gonna use the shove to push him back five feet. Can you make two attacks? Uh, it's a bonus action. Shield master shove. Oh, that's right. Uh, cool. cool. Make is that? Yeah, make an attack roll. Oh, well, you took a feet. So dope. Uh, <laughs> it's tight. That would be 
Uh, no. Seven. Uh, it kind of like flaps up over your shield so it doesn't get pushed back. And that's the end of my turn. All Mortis right. is just growling at him. All right, that'll bring it to Salen. There's one right oh. for me. Um, so... I'm just going to frantically kind of grab a couple of, like, seeds from one of my little druid bags. You know, all druids just have a lot of pouches. Okay. <laughs> uh, just utility belts. Uh, and I'm just going to throw some little thingums, uh, seeds in the air, and I'm just going to cast Moonbeam, because uh, that worked good on the imps. And I'm going to put it right on this piece of crap right in front of me. Okay. And then, if I may, I'm going to bonus action wild shape into a wolf. Sure. Just a regular wolf. All right. Uh, for Moonbeam, do I do the save now or sort of its turn? When it enters the space, so now, yeah, that's complicated. Yes. So right now. Mm-hmm. Then what is the save? Ooh. Shoot. Uh, my spell save DC actually went up because I leveled up. That was not a hit. Ooh. Uh, I believe it only went up by one, so the spell save DC is fourteen. All right, and what's the what's the save? Uh, constitution. Eleven. Ooh, fails. That will be one d ten radiant damage. Why are you moving? Boom. Uh, yes, one d ten radiant damage. Uh, shape changers make the save with disadvantage. Okay. Uh, yeah. She watch. She just like calls on this beam of moonlight into the room, and we'll see what happens to this little guy. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be eight points of radiant damage. Eight points of radiant damage. Okay. Mm -hmm. That looks like it does the full amount. Cool. All right, and then you wild shape into a wolf. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, without... Mm, no. No, I like where I am right now. Alright, that'll bring it to Kelzu. Uh, okay, great. I would like to just huck a dagger at the one that Mortis is currently engaged with. Okay, make an attack roll. Uh, 24. 24 hits. Roll damage with sneak attack. Dope. And then I get sneak attack. Uh... Uh, 16 points of piercing damage. Okay, reduced to half because it's resistant. And Ten then seconds. I would like to run over to here and try to hide among these boxes, crates, whatever they are. They're full of devils. <laughs> uh, I hope they're not. <laughs> me too. Sure. Uh, give me a stealth check. Fuck. Uh, 12. You get an idea that they all just saw you hide. Fuck. And so their passive perception is 12. Fuck. Alright, that is fine. Okay. The one you threw the dagger at, though, it looks like it hurt. It's not doing too good. Oh, ho, ho, Mortis, please kill it. <laughs> Alright. Anything else kills you? No, that is all from me. All right, bring it to Falister Fisk. He's going to shoot a crossbow bolt at the one that is not attacked, been attacked yet. Nice. That'll be a nine to hit, though. Haha, <laughs> misses. 
It kind of just like cackles as it flies over the crossbow bolt. Uh, and then he's just gonna swear and reload the crossbow. And that'll bring it to the last one. He's gonna fly over to, uh, hold on. Oh yeah, it's gonna fly over to Kelzu. And make two bite, and make a bite attack. That misses, and the fork attack also misses. Uh -huh. It just like sinks both into these crates around it and it screams out at you and like spits on you. Aha, uh -huh, you can't get me. And it'll bring it to Satir and she's like, I'm just gonna stay out here, I'm not exactly, you know, combat efficient. Yes, you should definitely stay out there. And then it'll bring it to the spine devil in front of Um Salem. Con save. Con save. That's right. I got distracted by this guy. Uh, that is a 19. Well, that saves, uh, but it's still half damage, I believe. It is indeed. Correct. So, I'm gonna... Just rolled a 9, but it fell out of my hand, so I'm gonna re-roll. Uh, one point of radiant damage. Reduced to half. We can't go to zero. Yeah, so oh, no, it was a 2. Um, oh, okay, so... Yeah, so... One point of radiant damage. <laughs> okay. Are you only rolling 1d10? Yeah, isn't it 1d10? It's a 2d10. Oh, no way! Yeah. Cool. Well, I guess I'll roll another d10. Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay, so that will be actually 9 uh, total halved. Okay. So 9 after being halved, or 9? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, uh, 9 initially. Okay, so it'll round it down, takes four. Okay. Yeah, I think I saw that it was 2d10, and I was like, that's too good. Yeah. Alrighty, anything else? Uh, it's the Spine Devil's turn. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Uh, bite, and then it's gonna stab you at the fork. The bite okay. is a 11 to hit. That will not hit. So it's so, like blinded from this bright like moonbeam. It's gonna go for the fork mm -hmm. attack. This dice is going to dice jail. That's a six to hit. <laughs> that also no. Just kind of like wolfily like mm. Alright. One in front of Mortis is gonna do the same thing. A bite and a fork attack. The bite is a 11. The fork is a nine to hit. Both attacks miss. Alrighty, that'll bring us to Mortis. Mortis is... Uh, how's the one in front of him looking? Uh, not too great. Alrighty then. Mortis is going to... Uh, hit him with his hammer again. Cool, make an attack one more. You swing your hammer at this imp who's kind of, not imp, spined devil who's kind of fluttering in the air a little bit. Uh, 22 to hit. Hits. So roll damage as you bring this mall down on it. Wow. Lost it. Uh, that is 8, 9, 10. 10. 10, reduced to half. 5. So you whack it, it kind of hits the ground a little bit, then flutters up, barely as alive. He, as he hits it, he uses Searing Smite. Okay. And that's 1d6. Uh, that is a 6. So that one is, you hit it, and you can tell that it's like still going to survive, so you channel Searing Smite through it. And you just paste it, crush it on the floor, and just reduce it to like a paste. Arr, so that he's gonna grab his neck. And he is going to. Um. Who's squishier? He is going to take a step here and uh, position himself against the one that has Kelzu trapped in a corner. Alrighty, Salen. And that's the end of my turn. Sure, Salen. Yeah, um, I'm just going to take an opportunity attack uh, from 
this one, that jerk. All right. And I'm see. also going to run over here. Okay, so it'll go for a... It'll go for a fork attack, or a bite. Mm -hmm. uh, the bite is a 18 to hit. <laughs> yeah, that'll hit. All right, so as it's like your fling away, it bites into like your wolf tail. Yeah. Oh. And you take three slashing damage. Okay. <laughs> um. And yeah, I'll roll a Constitution save for or a spell whatever Moonbeam yeah. Constitution. Yeah, Constitution save if you're on. Um. Yeah, that is an eight. So Moonbeam drops. Just an eight. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just an eight. I rolled a six. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, Moonbeam is gone. Dang. Well, that's not great. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go make an attack on the one by Kelzu. It's gonna make a bite attack. Okay, so you kind of, like, run up on top of the crates and leap to go for a bite attack. Mm-hmm. With pack tactics. Okay, so advantage. Yeah. Uh, first one... Nope. Oh, second one's a natural 20! Nice, so max damage plus roll damage. Yeah, it's the, uh, the fun stone dice that only rolls 20s and 1s. Uh, cool, so that is... Um, the bite is 2d4. So the 8 plus whatever you roll. Yeah. 2d4 plus 2, uh, which is... Oh, so 10 plus whatever you roll. Yeah. So 10 plus 6! Plus 2? Uh, yeah, yeah, 10 plus 8. So 18 points of bite damage. Nice. Reduced and... to half, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And the target does need to make a DC 11 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. Okay, so it takes 9 points of damage. Mm-hmm. And strength saving throw. Ooh, that is a seven. So it is currently lying on the top of these boxes prone. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? Uh, no, that is basically all I can do right now. I was really hoping Moonbeam would stay up, but that's all right. Alrighty, Kelzu. There's an imp, or not an imp, a spine devil lying on these boxes in front of you, prone. Okay. Uh, how hurt do both of the devils look? Uh, the one in front looks like it's not that hurt. Well, it does. It looks like it might just be about to be under half. And the other one that's uh, far away looks like it is under half. Okay. Then I'm going to stab the one laying in front of me. All right, attack with advantage because it's prone. Oh, fuck off. Um, uh, I don't know how to do math. 13? 13 hits. Ha ha ha. So, dam yeah, roll damage with sneak attack. Uh. Oh, that's good. Seventeen. Seventeen reduced to half. So it takes eight points of damage. Hmm. All right, and it's barely standing. Okay, then I will stab it again. Okay, uh, another attack with advantage. Uh, 14. <laughs> Hits. So roll damage with sneak attack again as you just stab this thing on the crate. I can only get sneak attack once per... So that is turn. correct. Uh, one point of damage. Okay. Still standing. Uh, anything else? Nope. Okay. Falister is going to see what you guys are doing over there. He's like, okay, good to see you got it. And he's going to shoot a crossbow mm -hmm. bolt at the one that's remaining. Uh, 
that's a, wow. Mess of the twelve. <laughs> He's like, ah, dark. These things are hard to hit. And he reloads his crossbow, and that's his turn. Uh, that'll bring it to the devil that's prone. It's going to use half of its movement to get up. And it's going to, at disadvantage, because it's so close to you guys, use its tail spines twice. Hmm. So it's going to shoot tail spines at Salen. Okay. For a uh, dirty 20 to hit. That will hit, yeah. All right, you take six piercing damage. Okay. And three fire damage. As well. oh. And then it's going to do the same thing to Kelzu. I am no longer a wolf. Okay. Uh, Twelve to hit Kelzu. No. So this shoots its spines at you and you just... Rogue duck. <laughs> Alrighty. She's the one who's out in the hallways. He goes, um, you guys got it. And I bring it to the first spine devil, who is over here, who is also going to do two, two tail spines. One at Mortis and one at Falister. Oh. Uh, the one at Mortis definitely misses. And the one at Falister definitely misses. And that'll bring it to Mortis. Hold up. Because I can use this as a reaction. Okay. As a reaction, I'm going to use Hellish Rebuke. Uh, doesn't it have to hit you? Uh. Oh, yes. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, right. So, uh, time to play Squish the Demon. Um, <laughs> he is going to... Actually, he's going to look like he's about to swing. Mm -hmm. And then he... Move, pushes the hammer forward against the uh, uh, demon to try and cast Inflict Wounds on it. Sure, make an attack roll. It is no longer prone, so not advantage. Ah! Uh, nine. It just slips out from under the hammer. Damn. Anything Damn. else? Um, as a reaction, he's going to a... a as a bonus action, mm -hmm. do, do, do. yes, I can. Uh, he is going to actually crap. He can't, can he? No. All right, that's it for his actions then. All right, that'll bring it to Salem. Cool. Um, which uh, which devil is looking more hurt? Uh, the one in front of you guys. Okay. Oh wait. Uh one second. They both look about the same, actually. Cool. It doesn't super matter because uh, I'm just going to grab just like a really weird looking thorny stem from my kind of hippie Susie Sue <laughs> hairstyle. Yeah. And just kind of do it a little like between my hands, and I'm going to cast Thorn Whip at the one that is further away. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, oh. Eh. Oh, that's going to be a nat 17 plus some stuff. Plus five. Ha. Hits. Cool. Wait. Um. Yes. Cool. Uh, great. So that is not going to be a ton of damage. It's just going to be a d6. Okay. So this thorny whip lashes out at it and... Whoosh. And it's going to get pulled closer to me and take three points of piercing damage. Okay. Yeah, if the creature is large or smaller, you pull the creature up to uh, ten feet closer to me. Okay, so... Five, ten... There we go. Anything else? Ah, uh, bu bu bu. No. Okay. I don't want to use up any of my, my wild shapes. Okay, dokie. Kelzu. Yes, it's me. Huh. Alright, I am going to bonus action disengage. Yeah. Nice. 
and move over here. And as part of that, my necrotic bolts will go after for the one that just got no, uh, that just got whipped. Sure. Sweet. Oh, no, that's not going to hit. Uh, yeah, it's just a 10. It kind of like just flutters around and dodges every bolt. Yeah. Feels bad. Hard to hit. All right. Anything else? Uh, I am going to throw a dagger at the one who is in between Mortis and Salen. Sure, make an attack. Oh no. That is an 11. Unfortunately, it does not hit the dagger, just thunk, sinks into one of the crates. Ugh. Ugh. I think that's smooth. Anything else? That's, the, that's everything I've got. Alright, Phallus here is going to be tired of his crossbow and he's going to move up to this one. And he's going to make two attacks with a short sword. <laughs> 11 plus 15 to hit. Oh, nice. So that's 7 piercing damage with sneak attack. Oh, no, he doesn't get sneak attack on that. Uh, so 7 piercing damage on that one. Reduced to half is 3 piercing damage. And he's, he's still alive. He's going to be so mad. He's just going to go, ah, and he's going to scream again and attack. Hits again. Another seven, and he cuts that one's head clean off, and that one dies. Nice. I'll bring it to the remaining spine devil, and it's going to bite Salen. Okay. For a 14. That will indeed hit, yeah. Okay. You take four points of slashing damage. And then it's going to go for the fork to Mortis's eyeball. <laughs> and that's a five to hit, so no. Very much. And uh, the, sorry, DM, how much damage was that? Uh, four. Okay, cool. And then uh, the woman's like, all right, I think that one's going to die soon. Mortis, your turn. Um, Mortis is... Uh... Screw this spell crap. He's gonna bring try and swing the hammer back at it again. Alright, make an attack roll. Oh uh twenty-four. Hits as you bring the hammer down on it, roll damage. That is six plus three, that is nine. Reduced to half. Does just what you needed to take it out. Ha! And you crush it into the crate, and as you crush it into the crate, you also splinter the crate into pieces. And just Ooh. a bunch of cheese and bread rolls rolled out of the Ooh. crate. Uh, and that is the end of the encounter. Nice. Mortis, Mortis, Mortis is going to grin. Breakfast. Mortis is just going to grin down at the imp, and he's just going to be like, who's your daddy? And Brother. he's going to pick up some cheese and start munching at it. Okay. I want to take a step back. Sure. <laughs> I'm going to dart in for some bread. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Uh, dried meat, loaves of bread, wheels of cheese, and other assorted foodstuffs are in these crates. Oh, sorry. No, the cr these crates are contain candles, oil flasks, incense, and rat traps, not food. <laughs> oh, can take I take oil flasks? Sense. Yeah, you can take, we'll say, two flasks of oil. That will. Um, you're going to see uh, Mortis is going to uh, quickly wander his way over to one of the wine barrels. Sure. Uh, finish off the last of his, uh, finish off the last of the water in his water skin. Okay. And fill it with wine. Sure. 
Uh, yeah, Salen is going to go look at the crates that the imps burst out of. Okay. Um, nothing in those crates. Okay. <laughs> Whack. All right, that's a few of them down. That went much better than with, than with the imps. Yeah, but those are still coming. I want to kill them so bad. Well, on the plus side, the stairs that I mentioned are right there. Okay, great. Did did we want to look Build at the some vine? Yes. Yes. I would very much like to do that. Hmm. So. I just I feel kind of bad. I I don't think I've I've, I've killed a single monster this whole time that's okay you you've gotten the assists and that's what matters <sighs> yeah right. yeah so don't kills. worry when it's time for you to kill is when you will get to kill yeah i i, I i've just never killed anything before And Salem is just going to, like, also boop into this next room and just kind of... All right. So you guys <laughs> swing the door open. Ooh, it's it's a door. Okay. Oh. And more than 200 cork bottles of wine are displayed in the seven-foot-tall wooden racks that span the west and south walls. The crates are empty. Hmm. I will take... Just the one bottle of wine. Alrighty. Uh, for the sake of this. Are you taking a bottle of fine wine? Or a common vintage? Uh, the fanciest looking wine I can suss out. I think right. Salem's looking for like the fantasy equivalent of a rosé. I think that's her deal. Alright. You guys both find bottles of fine wine that are worth 10 gold pieces a bottle. So then you get like a, a rosé. Nice. I'm gonna add that to my inventory. Kelza, you'd get like a fine wine that's made with like black currant and ginger and citrus. Yum. That actually sounds good. And yeah, both of those bottles are worth 10 gold pieces. Is there any way to just like add things to your equipment that are like oh custom items i see them yes yeah got there Ugh! i hit delete and accidentally just went back how frustrating okay uh custom items what's oh, perfect. what's mortis doing um he's just hanging out uh oh he's sipping at the wine that he's gotten just all right Checking it out while he's standing at the stairs with his, uh, actually, he's just going to stand in front of the stairs sure. and just kind of keep an eye in case something decides to try and come down. Cool, cool, cool. Sound is good. <laughs> you find anything good out there? Yes. Anything we can make money off of? There's lots of vine. Yeah, there's so much wine in here. Like, genuinely very a lot. Like a shocking amount. That's, I mean, these are supposed to be some pretty powerful people. Well, they no, I just... enjoy their wine. In a cellar this big, I actually thought there'd be a lot more. Well, there's like a few hundred bottles, or it's a hundred or so bottles. That's a decent amount. Eh. Yeah. But this cellar seems real big, and they don't seem to be storing all that much other than devils. Yeah. Some people have weird priorities. I don't, yeah, I don't think they really expect people to care to come for wine. You know? Yeah. 
Puzzle box? Uh, Puzzle yes. box. All right. Uh, I believe we have to go up these stairs. Hmm. I'll go first. All right. Yes, let's send Clanky McClankerson up first so they can let everybody know that we are coming up these stairs. Actually, um, before we go up the stairs, can I just kind of like really quietly go back into the wine cellar and see if there's any kind of like, like just any kind of like dwarven, like anything of a dwarven make? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'm not stealing you anything, more. Just sorry. Let's go upstairs. All right, so let's take this. What's the order of you guys going up the stairs? Mortis first. Because it's such a good idea. I'm sorry, would you like to go first and get jabbed by the demons? Yes, I would love to go first and get jabbed by the demons. Go right ahead. All right, so Kelsey's All going right. first. Who's behind Kelsey? I would like to stealthily go up. Sure. Uh, who's behind Kelsey? Might as well be Salem. Yeah. Right. Um, I just, I, I don't think the, um, uh, you know, c civilians should be right at the back. So maybe, I, more just, not just I'll take civilian. the back. Okay. No, I, I, I understand. Yeah. Alrighty. So everyone is making self checks. Oh boy. Yay. This isn't going to go well. We gotta get you some mithril. Uh, but. Alistair got a 21. Ooh. Hot bitch. And the noblewoman, the satyr, got a 19. Oh, nice. Uh, Salem, what did you get? Uh, I got a 17. Cool. And Mortis. Somehow, Mortis got 16. Cool. The clanging is not that loud it's almost like a soft clang uh and you guys get to the new Ooh. the map back into the upstairs of the villa new map new map and you guys yeah. you kind of ascertain you're probably just off of the kitchen oh goodness oh where are we where's the map where'd it go yeah hello i don't want to fight a cat oh i see well, it. speaking of which the cat is not there. Oh. Well, good, because I don't want to fight a cat. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What are we doing in this oh, no. wall? Oh, no. I've melded into the wall. Oh, okay. It's fine. Also, I got a 24 now that you asked. <laughs> <laughs> are there any windows that they can look out of? Nope. Hmm. Come on, let's go, let's go! Uh, this looks more like a... Uh... St yeah, stairs. Just just made for stairs going down. Mm. Uh, yeah, and Salen is just kind of going to, like, urgently whisper to Falster, um, what is the, uh, the fastest <laughs> way upstairs? Um, so, uh... He kind of points to me, you guys would recognize it has had the wax statue in it. Kind of just off the dining oh, yeah. room. He's like, there's a set of stairs going upwards. That's where you'd want to go. Is Unless that... we have someone small enough to fit in a dumbwaiter. Uh, Mortis is going to look small. right at Salen. But do we want this split up again in this house with the imps and the stabbing? No. That I mean, would be very terrible. want to go in a dumbwaiter. Um, actually, but, no, none um, of you could actually, never, sorry, nobody could fit in the dumb waiter. He's like, uh, no, no never mind. I, I don't think I could fit any of you in the dumb waiter. So the stairs aren't the only option. Unless, I don't know, that's the only option that I can provide. Are we standing just in the middle of this kitchen right now? Not in the kitchen, you guys are in no, the, in a little. The, 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 these are doors. Okay. And they're, that one, they're, that one's currently closed. Cool. So what's the plans? We're gonna head straight upstairs. Uh, yes. I am you closing. Have... He's gonna turn to uh, Mr. Double F. 
Uh, are you sure? You Do you think you have an idea of what room it might be in? Her bedroom, maybe, or something? Well, probably the bedroom that looks the nicest. I, I okay, thought it maybe. was with Sick Man. I mean, no? if it's with the Sick Man, then it's probably on the one that it has his name. Uh, his name is Thirstwell. So it'll be on Thirstwell's bedroom. If the doors Wait. are marked, it'll, that's where we want to go. I had a thought. Mm. What if we try to actually make noise a little bit, bring imps to us, kill imps so that there are less imps in sick man's bedroom? Thin her just a little bit. What if there's yeah. guards in the house and we alert the guards to our position, though? We kill hmm. guards as well. Uh, well, time. um, there are nine guards, uh, uh, um, 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 walking around, but like, you know, mil military. Um, so I, I don't know if we can deal with nine guards and <laughs> however many imps. And if there are guards in the house as well. Yeah. And, um, I mean... I, I just, you know, we've seen, uh, I've, I've seen a cook, and we've seen an old servant man. Oh, yes, and... it's an old servant man. Yeah, I just, um, I don't want to rule out that they might be... No, no, no that's, that's stupid, no. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe she has devil servants. You want to sneak out and have a look? Sure, I will go take a look. I will sneak out into the kitchen. All right, self check as you open the door to get out. Uh, 21. All right, you sneak out into the kitchen. Is there anybody in the kitchen? Not currently. Great. Can I smell anybody? <laughs> uh, no, but looking outside the windows, it is nighttime. Oh, it's nighttime. Because you guys slept oh. during the day. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my sleep cycle's all messed up. Uh, all right, I will go to these doors and listen to see if I can hear anybody. Perception check. Fuck. I... <laughs> A seven. You do not. I'm really not doing so hot on the perception check. All right, there's nobody there. I will try to sneak through this door as well. All right, another still check. Uh, 15. All right. You are open the doors. And... What's the other people doing as you guys see Kelsey kind of just wander away? Um, I actually just want to know, would I know if the curtains, like for the windows in this room, if they're like, are, are there curtains, or are there, like, big windows? And... Well, the room you guys are in, there are no windows. Oh, no, I meant in the kitchen. Oh, uh... Um... Not really. The, the okay. curtains aren't that big. All right, I will try to sneak through the kitchen to where Kelzu is, because, uh... Bad things happened last time we left, you know, we sep uh, split up, so. All right. I'm going to boop through and uh, roll a stealth check. Here, anyone who's following, make a stealth check. Oh, no. Yeah, no, that is... That's a, that's a two. All right, uh, you kind of step and you kind of wonder and you kind of clang into a pot that's hanging from the ceiling. I mean, it's a five, but it's a it's a natural too. So, yeah. Mm. All right, Mortis, what are you doing? Uh, Mortis is he doesn't he knows that he's not stealthy, so he's just kind of peeking an eye, peeking his head out the door right now, going, "Hey, is it safe?" Hey, hey, is it safe? Oh, um, I'm going to look out these two windows. Um, 
kids. Uh, you see that the courtyard is now lit up bright for with the lanterns on the walls. Okay. So you can easily see a patrol of guards slowly moving past the window. I'm going to duck behind this table. All right, you duck behind the table and they pass the window. Sweet. Uh, yeah, once they're passed, I'm going to wave everybody over. Okay. And Ooh, then go Lord. back over here. It's almost like a pantomime of military hand signatures. Like, she's seen Mortis do stuff like that a couple of times, and she's just kind of like... All right. Mortis is laughing to himself, because what she thinks she says is go forward, and what she actually is saying is probably something completely different. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're following. He's, he's following and trying not to laugh at the same time, because he thinks it's kind of adorable. All right, so Kelsey, you get to the bottom of those stairs. Yes. Once I get out to here, I'm going to do another um, Divine Sense to look for any imps. What's the radius on that? 60 feet. Cool. Uh, no. Or hold on. Yeah, you detect them in the foyer where they were before. Right here yeah. and right here. Nowhere near you guys if you're quiet enough. Mortis is just going to motion for everyone to be quiet and move towards the stairs. Okay. While standing right okay. there with uh, his weapon ready in case one of them decide to pop out. All right. So the other two get to the stairs without any issues. Nice. Great. I'm going to go up the stairs. Wait here. I will call down to you if it's safe. All right, so I'm removing your token from this map. Also, I'm, of course, doing this stealthily because I'm rogue. <laughs> yeah, roll another stealth check. Oh, these are just getting progressively worse, huh? <laughs> uh, 13. 13, all right. You get to about... You sneak up the stairs, you round the corner of the stairs, and immediately... um. We'll see something. Let's see. If you look to the right a little bit on a different map. Do I see a different map? You should, if you go to the right. Uh, Lapras hang, lanterns hang from the rafters of this drafty hall, and you kind of turn up the staircase. And one of the floorboards kind of goes, Aww. And... Two guards at the top of the stair just kind of turn and look towards you and rush towards you, Kelzu. I need everybody to roll initiative as you hear guards moving on the second floor. Fuck. Not safe. <laughs> Are you kidding? Oh, sick. So I'm going to else's tokens over here. Sweet. Actually, yeah. so many guards. Mortis would still be against that wall when it happens. Yep. Faster, are you sitting on my other dice? So Mortis is technically not anywhere near that. Yeah. I'll just put him there for now. Are you drooling? And then that's an extra 10 feet I need to move to get to there. Yes. So just subtract 10 feet from my movement. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. All right, everybody. Oh, there's a lot of guards. Uh -huh. yep. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Not safe. <laughs> All righty. Luckily, guards do not have a lot of health. Just so you guys know. <laughs> well, I'm going to brutalize them. And we're going to play Steel for Humans. Noted. Uh, cool, and since they're so weak, I'm just gonna have them all use, use the same initiative, because there's a, there's a decent amount of them. Alrighty, they all are gonna do that. Alrighty, and Falister got an 11. 
And this poor little woman is going to be a non-combatant, so she's just going to hide under the stairs and not fight. <laughs> Good. Not oh. scared little woman. She's just a, she's, she's not a combatant. She can't fight. She's just going to hide under the stairs. So we'll just say she's on a different layer right now. Boom. I've rolled three fours in a row. Oof. Oof. Um, Kels, what's your for initiative? Nine. Salen. Uh, I actually got a 17. 17. Mortis. Yeah. 10. 10. All right. So Salen goes first. Oh, no. Okay. Um, Am I able to... Huh. Okay. Um... Am I able to... Ah, shoot. Huh, this is an awkward shaped hallway. Yeah. And, uh, okay, am I able to get past Kelzu? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, that's all right. I'm just going to... Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go up onto the stairs, and I will just give you guidance. Cool. Because just in case you need to make an ability check, you know? Love that. Yeah, which uh, I should have been using for the stealth rolls. But I just took it, so yeah. Nice. All right, that's my turn. Okay. So these are just guards that have been hired by the family to help protect things. You guys get the idea? They don't look like they're possessed by demons or anything. Mm -hmm. They just look like people trying to do a job that they've been paid to do. Um, but they are seeing you all. Yeah. And they are going to do their job. So. Yeah. Is it worth their lives, though? The one that is immediately in front, like, up the stairs in front of Kelzu is just going to grab its, his spear and just huck it at Kelzu. Uh, and that is an eight to hit. So, Kelzu, you kind of just, like, grab the spear out of his hand as you catch this spear, and also you have a spear. Great. And he's just going to be like, um... Oh, help, help, help! And he's going to call the other guards that are in the hallway to come rushing forward. Um, so, this guard is going to run forward and throw a spear at Salen on the stairs. Why are they getting rid of spears? I don't care. Uh, that <laughs> is a 18 to hit. Yeah, I'll hit. Alright. So, the, the spear goes sailing at you, and you take seven, you take six points of piercing damage as a spear slams into your shoulder and no. stabs into your left shoulder. And then, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's, that guard's gonna get to there and not do anything. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And Kurt, Kurt, this one's gonna start coming down the stairs towards Kelzu. Not great. And then, finally, this guard is gonna go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and post up right here. Or post up, he's gonna, he's gonna post up right here. Uh, Falarf is going to be like, um, I don't think, oh, damn it. And he's going to shoot a crossbow at the one coming down the stairs. Ten plus... So is this a wall here, or, like, this... Kind of like, there's the stairs, and then... Oh, uh, it's, like like... it's like a railing, like a banister. Oh! Yeah. Okay, uh, cool! I, I thought it was, like, a solid wall. Nah. Uh, so it's a 14 to hit, which does not hit the guard. The guard lifts a shield and just... <laughs> No, it is so like, uh, built, but that's not a wall. Well, reload. Mortis. Mm. Uh, it's ten. How, many, how much movement do I have? Twenty-five. Mm. Ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. He is going to stand there. Yeah. And you are going to see him dig into his, uh, dig into one pouch with his hand, uh, 
and he's going to pull out a small bottle, and there's just going to be a spray of holy water, a uh, few drops that come from the tip of the bottle, and he's going to shake it at the at the at the three of his uh, fighting friends, and he's going to go go kick their asses, and he's going to cast bless on all three of them. Cool. Wants a D4 to everybody, right? On um... any attack or saving throws. Yeah. You get an additional D4. Nice. Sweet. Anything else? That's concentration, right? Yes, that is concentration. So he is going to put his shield up mm -hmm. and uh, just prep himself at the bottom of the stairs. Alrighty, that'll bring it to Kelzu. You have a spear in your hand that you caught. And there's, uh, there's a guard uh, coming down the stairs towards you. Yeah, so I have a racial feature called Predatory Warrior. Yeah. Uh, that allows me to use a dex-based unarmed strike that deals 1d6 slashing damage. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just gonna, like, like put, like, the spear away mm -hmm. and just, like, straight up bum-rush this guy. Go for it. You just sprint up the stairs. Yeah. He's like, um, this and guy's, this guy's like, got a spear. The one behind him is like, I don't know why I threw my spear. And then, yeah, <laughs> then I'm just gonna, like, punch him. Go for I'm gonna claw him up. Okay. I don't think that's gonna hit. Yeah, it's just an eleven. Uh, blocks with the shield. Just your claws rake into the wood of the shield. All right, I will try again because I can do that as a bonus action. Oh my fucking god! Fourteen. Uh, he parries it with the spear. Oh. Oh, that's so annoying. All right, I'm just gonna growl at him like a jackal. <laughs> like, oh. All righty, anything else? No. All right, Salen. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of yank the spear out of my <laughs> shoulder and do this kind of like weird twisty motion. Sure. With the finger and say a word in Druidic, and I'm going to cast Entangle. Nice. In a 20 foot cube. So all of these guards. Uh, yeah, all of them. Um, so starting from that guy, uh, the front one near Kelzu. Yeah. And going all, for this entire kind of landing area. Uh, yeah, they are going to need to make a strength saving throw or be restrained. And there does become difficult terrain, correct? It does become difficult terrain, yes. And so it's 20 feet, right? Mm hmm Okay, so... Uh, boom. We'll go 5, 10, 15, 20. 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, yeah, that'll be everybody. Yeah. I, I thought this was a wall, and I wanted to cast uh, maybe Thunder Wave, but then I was like, well, that would be loud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. And they only made what? Pardon me? Strength saving throws? Mm-hmm. Okay. The one at the top of the stairs got an 11. Fail. The one that threw the spear that's guarding the one door, which is this one. Yeah, yeah. Got a 20. That, yeah. Uh, the two kind of at the railing. One on the right got a 20, the one on the left got a 12. Oh, fail. And then the one right here got a 12. All right, yes, yeah, so that uh, the 20s. Okay, so guard number 14 and guard number 12 succeeded. And then what happens to the other uh, three? Uh, so the ones who fail, um, they are restrained. Okay. So they have the restrained condition. And yeah, they can use uh, its action to make a strength check against the spell save DC to free themselves. Okay. So um, but yes. Yeah, restrained. Excellent. Anything else? <sighs> Uh, when a creature enters Entangled, do they have to make the save as well? I believe so. Okay. Um, if so, that means any allies going up will also have to... Yeah. 
<laughs> I just think we could just smuck them through the railings. Um, boop, 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 boop. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, no, it's just in the area. Yep. Uh, yeah. When you, when you cast the spells. But that does count yeah. as difficult terrain. Okay, cool. It is difficult terrain. Anything else? Uh, that... Uh, well, no, that was my action. Um, so, nope, that's that's it. Alrighty, the guards. This guard doesn't have a spear. Is just gonna be like, um, I made a grave mistake, and he's just gonna open this door behind him and hide behind it. I'm coming for oh. you. Yeah, um, your spear was in my arm. The one that's restrained is. Yeah, gonna make an attempt to break out of it. That's a strength and a strength save to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it nope. might be a strength check now. Nope, that's a five. He is still restrained. It's his action, so that's his turn. <laughs> uh, this guard is just gonna be like, "Ah, oh, fuck it," and he's gonna hop. Oh, it's difficult terrain. He's gonna yeah. hop over the railing and land on the floor. That's pretty badass. And that's take cool. how tall is that drop? Um. Da, 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 da. 15 feet, so he takes 1d6 bludgeoning damage. Takes one point of bludgeoning damage. That makes it even more badass, honestly. Just, yeah. Lands, takes one like point of bludgeoning damage. Like the floor cracks damage. a little bit as he yeah. like a superhero lands. Superhero landing, yeah. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. And then he's going to rush toward, he's going to move towards Falister. And he's going to stab, oh, he doesn't need to move, he's going to stay right here. And he's going to stab at Falister with his spear. Hmm. That's a two plus three. Fifteen to hit, which hits Falister. So he's just like two handing the spear and jamming it into Falister's belly. Oof. And that is ooh. Seven points of piercing damage. Yeah. Okay. So you guys hear Falister kinda of go <clears throat> as he gets stabbed in the stomach with the spear. Uh that still suck. So the guard that's on the stairs is succeeded. Just is moving. Just doesn't move. Uh, but he's going to make a spear attack at Kelzu. Uh, and that is a 16 to hit. Oh, that hits. And two yeah. hands of spear just great. It gets you in the left shoulder. And actually goes out the other side of your left shoulder. And he rips it out. Oh. Uh, and you take three points of piercing damage. Oh. All right. Uh, he's, yeah. Oh, then, uh, was that with disadvantage if it's restrained? Uh, he, that one was not restrained. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, and then this one is going to make the action strength check to break out, and that's a four, so that one is still stuck. I bring up the Phalliser. is going to be like, ah, they, ah, today sucks. And he's going to make two short sword attacks at this guard in front of him. Both attacks get a plus d4. Oh, yeah, they do. Uh, all 13. attacks, all attacks and saves. Yeah, so the first attack is a thirteen plus four, which will be seventeen, which hits because the armor class for these guys is not a seventeen. So he's just he's like, ah, and he slashes the shoulder across the, the soldier across the throat with the short sword. Oh, that's six six slashing damage, and then sneak attack because uh, Mortis is right there. Uh, so. That's, oh, that's a nine additional, so six, oh, hold on, my math is so bad. Is that fair? Six <laughs> plus nine, 15. He swings a short sword out, and you guys hear like a, the sound of like the short sword scraping bone as he slashes this guard across the throat and goes so deep that he actually hits the uh, spine. And narrow, like narrowly, like decapitates his guard, and the guards like oh, and just stumbles backwards, dead <laughs> on the ground. He looks I hate that, that I'm cool getting man. used to that kind of stuff. <laughs> so the cool guard that jumped over the railing just got like partially decapitated. In a cool way, though. And then Falister's gonna be like, "Ugh, Mortis." Good work. I wanted that one. Well. And is going to start heading there, but now he's stuck behind Salen, yep. and now our frontline fighter is in the back. Yep. 
Uh -huh. All right. That'll bring it to kills you. Wait. Oh, sorry. I might have something. No, I don't. All right. Okay. Yeah. That's kills it. You. Is the one in front of me restrained? He is not. Okay. Okay. I am going to, but the other two are restrained. Yeah. They're like struggling around in these entangling roots that kind of like erupted from the ground. Okay. I'm going to just like look at the one right in front of me. I'm going to be because like, he just stabbed me. I'm going to be like, all right, now your friends have to die for your sins. Uh, and then I'm going to throw a dagger at um, this one. Sure. Uh, with advantage because uh, he's restrained. And a D4 because I'm blessed. Heck yeah. Oh, it's super gonna hit. What'd you get? Twenty-four. Yeah, he's like struggling in this these uh, like grasping vines, and the dagger like sinks into his neck. So roll damage plus sneak attack. Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. The dagger sinks into his throat, and his eyes go lifeless, and he falls limp. But his body does not fall over because he's restrained by these vines, so he's dead standing up. That is that is wacky. Uh, and then... Does the entangle cover the banisters? Uh, no. Okay, can I bonus action disengage, and then, like hop and run up the banister uh acrobatics check to see if you don't fall yeah that's fair and whereabouts how far are you oh you're disengaging never mind i fall what'd you get i got a nat one yeah you kind of run up the banister you get about to the top and you kind of just Oof off and land prone on the floor and you take four, points, so of four, po four points of bludgeoning damage. Be, try to like save face and be like the floor hurts more than you did. Okay, nice. You are currently prone. <laughs> am I wait am I prone on the dead body? Yes. <laughs> Actually you know what? It cushioned your fall so you take no bludgeoning damage. Oh, dope. <laughs> that still hurt more than your spear. <laughs> just emotionally speaking. You're still just prone on this partially decapitated body. Alrighty, uh, Salen. Cool. Um, so, there's a guard who's hiding behind this door. Yeah, he opened the door and hid inside the room. Oh, he's in the room. Ah, okay. Well, uh, what would it, how would I be able to like push past this like restrained dead body? Uh, it's the guard in front of you isn't dead. Oh, it's not dead? No. Ew! Okay, 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 okay. Uh, hmm. Well, I am going to. And I just saw Kelzu just not run along the railing at all. I don't want to talk about it, please. Um, okay. Uh, it's fine. Uh, it's totally fine. I am, yeah, I am just going to try to thorn whip this, uh, this guard that's right in front of me. Okay. So... Oh no, that's probably not gonna work. Yikes. Uh, well, uh, that's gonna be a, yeah, a 12. Uh, he kind of just like steps out of the side and the uh, thorn just kind of whoosh, mm. misses. This guy Damn. is their best guard. 
Yeah, apparently. He gets paid the big bucks. Am I able to try to, to I guess, run along the banister just to get behind with the rest of my movement? Athletics. Okay. Or athletics or acrobatics. Or acrobatics. I mean, yeah. You're trying to balance on this kind of railing. Neither are really good, funny. but we'll see. Oh, uh, I mean, I might be able to do it. Avec. Uh, that's going to be a... Uh, that's actually going to be a 19. 19, yeah, you just... Yeah. Along the railing and you get behind him. Cool. You're now in difficult terrain. <sighs> Sweet. Anything else? Uh, no. That oh. will be it. Okay. Excellent. You hear the guard open another door. Uh, yeah. Over here. And that's his his movement will be there. Uh, the guard that is kind of uh, in front of you mm -hmm. is just gonna spin around and make a spear attack against you. Uh, which that's a nine to hit, so that misses. That misses. Gets kind of caught in all the entangling vines, and he's like, ah, damn it. Uh, to bring it to the one that's restrained, he's just gonna be like, ah, he's just gonna try to break free again. He does not break free. Then I'll bring it to Falister, who's gonna shoot a crossbow bolt <laughs> up towards the one that's in front of you. Nice. That's a f that hits, and he's gonna put sneak attack on that. Cool. So the crossbow like a bolt just goes <laughs> sailing through the air. Ugh, three piercing damage, plus sneak attack. Oh, two ones. Oh, so dang. five piercing damage total. The crossbow kind of like hits this guard in the back of the shoulder. Oh. Nice. Okay. Oh. Uh, Mortis. You're muted. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Mortis is going to let out a growl, just... Rawr! And he's going to charge 5, 10, 15 feet up the steps. Mm -hmm. And he is going to swing at the person in front of him. Um, that is... 12. 12 misses. He kind of, you just kind of ting off the back of the armor. This is like the best one. He's very good. Why are you working for these jerks? <laughs> hey, you want a job? <laughs> right? <laughs> Anything else, Mortis? Um, no, that's it for me right now. He's just going to put his shield up between them. All right. Kelsey, you are prone on top of a dead body. Ugh, oh, great. I am going to use half my movement to get up. Mm -hmm. um, which leaves me with 15 feet. But, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get onto the banister again and run up it. Okay. Uh, same thing as before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I use the guidance I got, yeah. like, at the beginning of combat for this? Yes. Or, uh, I don't know how long guidance lasts for. Oh, just a minute. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can use it. Okay, great. 21. You get to wherever you're going. Great. I'm gonna just plop right here. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna stab this guy. 
All right, make an attack roll with advantage. Yeah, stop him. Natural 20. Max damage plus roll damage plus sneak attack. Okay. And then sneak Sick. attack is also max for a crit. Great. And then rolled on top. <laughs> Ooh. This is going to be a lot of damage. Uh, that guard was just trying to feed their family. Yeah. Uh, 27 points of damage. How do you kill that one just for that, that amount of damage? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm going to like run up the... Um, like the banister and just kind of like jump right in front of them and just be like death awaits you kind of like sink my dagger into his all right and then i will bonus action dash through this door um Thinking. It is difficult terrain right now. So I yes, don't think I, you have enough movement. Well, if I dash, I get another 35 feet of movement. Okay, and which door are you going through? The the one that the guy went through. Okay, so you can get just through it, yeah. Perfect. Goodbye! But also, please come make sure I don't die. And you would have seen that he went into this. He, he, he went into... The door into this room is open. Okay, oh. great. I've got the eyes. Stop chasing me! Do you promise to stop? Stop running! No. Well. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anything else, Kelsey? No, that's it. All right, Salem. Okay. Well, I guess. Honestly, I am just going to make like I'm I'm just going to make a scimitar attack. Go for it. With uh yeah. And I still have bless. <gasps> yeah. Doesn't matter. Natural 20. Max damage plus roll damage. Ooh. <laughs> oh, so that's going to be a 6. So that's going to be 9 plus whatever I roll plus 3. Thick. Uh, that is gonna be nine plus eight. All right. How do you how do you kill this guard? Um. So I think I'm just like kind of freaking out, and I'm not even trying to kill him. I'm just trying to get past him, and I, I draw my blade and I I go to shove him, mm -hmm. and just like stick it right in his leg. And he just starts, like, gushing blood. All right, yeah, you just, like, sever his femoral artery, and he just tumbles down the stairs. Exactly right, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, drop and tangle so we can be on our way. All right. And I'll follow Kelzu. Sure. And maybe mutter, like, a little kind of prayer to consign this guy I just killed to the earth. Okay. All righty. Um, you hear the guard scream and Kelsey, looking into the room, you get the idea the guards probably aren't from. Oh, wait, hold on. I don't think you could open the door. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, you get the idea that the guard point is not allowed in. The guards aren't allowed in that room. Ooh. And. Oh. oh, oh. He screams like a it's blood so curdling sick. scream. And Kelsey, you kind of see a suit of armor animate in the corner. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Uh. And Damn. 
an orange light, a fiery orange light fills this suit of armor. And it's going to add its turn to the initiative, which... Actually, it does not know... It, it's only going to go for the guard, because it does not see anybody else in that room. Oh, poor guy. He's like, oh, no! Screams out loud as his hand... The suit of armor just animates and just moves right towards him. For its initiative, it gets not super high, so it'll be going probably at the bottom. Um... Cool. Uh, boop. So the guard's gonna scream, and he's gonna say, "Ah!" He's gonna like try to run down the stairs that are in that room. Oh, the stairs are going down. Okay. Or these stairs are going up. It looks like. Yeah, he's just he's sprint up those stairs and disappear, and the armor is going to chase after him. So he disappears up the stairs. Uh, and essentially, guys, it'll end combat because this, this armor is just gonna chase after that guard. Oh, did anyone see any of that? Uh, Kelsey would have. Okay. So yeah, that'll end combat if you, unless you guys go pursue. The, I just saw armor animate. Is that something we should be dealing with? Do you think? Uh, probably not. Where hey, the guards are gone, no? we're, we're up here. Is it chasing us? No, it chased the guard, but I think it might come back for us when it inevitably kills him. Mm. Uh, I say lock the door and let's see what else is on this level first. Well, I want. I think we should check out the room that it is from first, so that while it's not in there, you know. Yeah, great plan. Let's let's do that. All right, I'm going to go poke around in the room. All right. Uh. You hear screaming from upstairs, and you get the sense that the thing might have just thrown the guy off the off a tower. Oh fuck! All right, all right, out, out. Well, close the door. All right, you run out. You close the door. Um. And you hear the sound uh... of someone. You hear a loud sound of like armor, and like wet meat hitting the ground outside. Ooh. Cool. Make sure you lock that door. Kill. I don't have um, a key. Mortis is going to pop open the door in front of him. Uh, oh, sorry. All right. Boop. Boop. Um. Boop. Alrighty. So that. Boop. Wait. Oh, yeah, no, he's just gonna pop it. He's just gonna glance at the door and then pop it open. Okay, uh, you pop open it, open. And it is a balcony. Oh. Uh, overlooking the front yard is nighttime. The lanterns are all lit up over the yard, and you can see the guards patrolling outside very easily. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a 15 foot drop from the balcony to the ground, and you get the sense that uh, if the guards, the guards could easily see you if they decide to look up. But people don't look Insta up, though. Instantly shuts the door again. Okay. Um. So now that we're up here and there aren't any, there's nothing really like. Do any of these doors have names? Yes, exactly. I wanted to check that too. <coughs> yeah. Uh, you hear what sounds like someone scurrying around in this room, though. And on the door it says "Thirstwell." Like scurrying? Yeah, like someone's trying to like leave. Oh. Gross. What a gross noise. Should I like Hey um uh should should I open it? Yes, that's his room. Oh uh, uh... Wait, wait, let me go first. Can you hear the sound of a window opening? Oh fuck, Mortis, hurry up. Break Which in. door is it? This one here? Yeah. Kick it in. Mortis. Yeah, he's kick. just gonna bash it. He's just gonna take his shield and bash it down. Alright, you bash the door down. Something cool. And you see a sort of frail and sickly looking uh, gentleman having the window open and just about to jump out of it. And in his he's hand, I don't know, he's not holding anything in his hands, but it looks like he's about to jump out the window. Mortis is. Sorry. Can I, like, thorn whip him? Uh, go for it. Are you in? Are you. Is more. Uh, I was just going to say, Mortis's first move is to pull the dagger out of his belt and throw it. Make an attack roll. 
cool. Kind of my thing. Um, I have to re-equip it for a sec. <sighs> Dagger. Uh, that is a nineteen to hit. Nineteen to hit does hit very easily. That is one d four plus three. Uh, that is four damage. Four damage. The dagger sinks into his back as he's like trying to crawl up the window, and he slumps up against the window like he's on the verge of death. Everyone, search the room! Hey, it's not that to yell. Yeah, I'm, I'm right behind you. As soon as Mortis is going to head right over to the to the boy and flip him over. Uh, so this boy looks like he's 42 years old. Because he's years 42 old. years old. Um, <laughs> Mortis is 300. Man. It's a boy to him. All right, and as you rush into the room and attack this guy. Oh, baby. Imps. We're about to get imped. Uh, Mortis. As you like rush over, you throw this dagger at this poor little man. <laughs> Uh, natural 20 to hit. And a lot Mortis, of you feel damage. a very familiar sting hits you in the back of the neck. And an imp appears. Nah. And it's a natural 20, so that is... So you better save that con. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, yeah, or else it's crit poison damage, yeah. Uh, so you take 11 points of poison da or 11 points of piercing damage as the stinger hits you in the back of the neck. And you need to make a con save. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, so does resistance mean I get an advantage on a con save? Uh, not unless it says so. I have resistance to poison. I mean, it means you take half damage. It only, mean, it only means you take half damage. It doesn't mean you have advantage. All right. Let's see what Dark Monster 2 comes Let out there. Me check. That is a 16 for Khan. 16 Ooh. saves, but you do take half damage, but Ooh. half damage of the crit for poison. Uh, and you do have advantage against poison uh, saves. Cause under, I just looked under your character sheet. And you uh, so you have advantage on that, but you succeed anyway, so. Uh, and as he, um, uh, and for that save, can I? Just a sec, let's see if I can do this. Uh, if an effect allows half damage on success, you can use her. Okay, so as, as for that, I am going to use the Shield Master Evasion. Mm -hmm. uh, and as the thing starts to pump its poison in, it negates all damage. Okay, so instead of taking... So if you didn't save, you would have taken 30 points of poison damage. So with the save with the crit, that's 15 points of poison damage, but with Shield Master, that is none. So I just take the straight... How much was the piercing damage 11. again? So that's just 11 piercing damage. Yep, and now there's just an imp floating in here. Fuck. Mortis is just going to grin at him. You really thought that could fuck me up? Why don't you try a little of this? Anybody doing anything? What? Anybody doing anything else? He's, hand, he's holding up his hammer. Definitely disengaging because it's right there. All right, bolts yeah. of the grave. I'm like backing up, but I will bolt of the grave. The imp. Uh, twenty-four it hits. Uh. Oh come on. Uh, snake eyes. So oh, that is oh. seven. Seven. These darts just go, doo -doo -doo -doo. and the amps just like, ah, yeah. and throw spells or not throw spells. Uh, uh, yeah. He would have been here by now. He's just gonna be like, oh fuck! <laughs> Crossbow bolt at the imp. Hits the imp dies, nice. and falls in the bathtub. <laughs> Dunk. Oh, that's what that old is. Um, yeah. and What's so just describe this room. Uh, drab curtains cover the windows of this plain room, which contains a bed, a padlocked iron chest, a claw-footed iron bathtub, and a fireplace. Um, 
and this individual who is now leaning up against the window, bleeding out. What do you guys want to do? Um. Okay. Uh, I think Salen would probably. Yeah, I mean, okay, you just give us the puzzle box. You don't have to die right now. You will eventually, but not not today. Maybe. The persuasion check. Cool. Mortis is gonna pump two points into him. Okay. Pull out his dagger and pump two life oh. points into him. How would you for persuasion? Um, persuasion. Yeah, not great. Persuasion. Uh, that's an eleven. He just says. He just whines. Those guards were useless. I mean, that's so on useless. You. You're all going to get captured again. I don't know what you think you're doing here. It's not going to make a difference. You're all going to die. Can I? Yeah, like someday. <laughs> someday. Uh, I will walk over and just pull out a dagger and like lightly trace it against his cheek mm -hmm. and be like, listen, buddy, I need the fucking puzzle box. No. I'm tired of this house. No? Yeah, just uh, kill him. I think it's his time. No, no, no. Don't no. kill me. Don't kill me. I well, said it wouldn't make a difference. Or... Fine, fine, fine. It's in the chest. This chest at your foot of your bed? Yes. Is it trapped? Um. No. Do I believe him? Yeah. Inside check. You kind of get the idea based on the position he's in. Yeah, you believe him. Great. Should they kill him anyways? No. Leave him for now. He might still be useful. Besides... He is not useful. His family is dead. Okay, so... Alistair makes a good point. One vote kill, one vote don't kill. And that leaves you as our tiebreaker, Salen. Um... Oh, wow, great. Okay, uh, that's fine. Um... I'm not super into the idea of killing a man in cold blood. Uh, but I'm also super not into this guy. He casts Sanctuary on himself. <sighs> and just sits there. What, is, uh, kill him. what does that do? Do we know? Uh, it's a wisdom save to he, attack. Yeah, he's warded. Yeah. I'm going to try to stab him. Make an attack roll. And then make a wisdom saving throw first. Mortis is going to pop oh. the chest while they're working you on it. Uh, can I give it guidance? Oh, uh, you can give guidance. Cool. You can do Don't this kill him! He still has the key! It's 14. 14. Uh, 14 on the wisdom save, eh? Yes. That doesn't sound good. Uh, that succeeds. Nice. Is he prone? He is prone because he's, like, up up against the, uh, thing. Um, so your check <laughs> does go through the, uh, goes through the sanctuary. So roll damage. It's a 19. It was sneak attack. Uh, and then, yeah, because he was prone, I had advantage on it, so I get my sneak attack. He has one hit point. Or no, he, he had one hit point, because he has nine total hit points when he got attacked. Because he's a very frail, sickly old man. And then the two hit points brought him up to three. How do you want to do this? Uh, it's just going to be like, I'm sorry, but his death is calling you home. And then just like another slow stab into the throat. He's just gonna like slowly push the tip of your dagger into his throat, and he was like, <clears throat> his like blood was like welling up out of his mouth, and out of the hole, out of like the wound in his neck, and he just kind of like just goes still. And then I'll wipe my dagger off on his clothing. Okay. 
and fall for things away. Kalzu, search him. He might have the key. I will search him. You search him. I just. He has I, nothing I don't... on him. Uh... Oh, hold on. Sorry. Oh. Um. He does <laughs> have the key on him. I found the key. It's in his robe pocket. It was in his robe pocket whole time. Hmm. Would have guessed. Of I mean, course, the little bastard had it. He could have just, like, given that to us. He could have. Yeah? But he chose not to. Mm. How are you doing, Salen? Uh, emotionally or physically? Both. You seem like death is probably not really your forte overall, perhaps? But no, also, I mean, you got really hit with that spear earlier. Yeah, no, I did. I did get hit by the spear, but no, it, it, it's okay. Um, yeah, it's not as bad as the poison. I, and, I don't you know, want to take away from your socializing, but uh, we did cause quite a commotion with those guards. Let's see the key, Kalzu. Let's see what's in this key, box. Marcus. I will give more just the key. Okay. Mortis is going to pop it open. Okay, so you unlock the chest. Um, it contains a jumble of wrinkled garments, red wax candles, quills, blank sheets of parchment, and jars of ink. Uh, it also holds an unlocked wooden coffer containing 73 gold pieces, 120 silver pieces, and a potion of healing, as well as a black covered tome titled Apocalypto. Uh, and then you also see this kind of weird-looking cube. Puzzle um, box. I think that's the hell and it looks like a puzzle box. But Mortis is gonna have this potion. Mortis is gonna poke it. Nothing happens. Oh, what in the Clive Barker is this? Okay. He's gonna pick it up out of the box very gently. Okay. Um, it's uh, about five to six inches on each side. And it looks like it's composed of airtight interlocking parts made of infernal iron. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So, I think we should just get out of here. Yes, and that's the box that uh, my associate at the candle keep is looking for. I mean, I'm so glad that they don't have more than one hell puzzle box in their house. Yes. That would be um, a lot. Too uh, much. What did they do? Now we have to sneak out of here. Oh, God. They probably have actually a couple of these, and this is just, like, the best one. For the treasure, I will post it in the Discord so, uh, after the game so you guys can kind of keep track of that after the fact. Yep. Yeah. Um, I already got it written down. Cool. So... Now, this might be a bit uh, risky. Yes. But what if, because, oh, wow, now I'm way zoomed in. Hang on, I gotta. Do you think we can maybe wait until the guards are gone, climb down from that balcony, bolt through the front gates? That sounds very risky. Mm. I don't know what they'll leave. They kind of just patrol and patrol. They might, uh, you know, leave, you know, to change shifts and stuff, so it's worth a shot, yeah. but... I mean, and there, there is a window when one group has kind of gone, and then the other one is still around the corner. Uh, that, that happened before, so... Um... I was kind of thinking that perhaps it would be smartest if I took Puzzle Box and snuck out and then waited for you perhaps near that bakery in alleyway where you turned into cat. Hmm, okay. Yeah, um... Yeah, we could. The other... If we could get onto the roof also, I think... Wait, is the stable connected to, like, the main house? No. Okay. It's a separate building. Well, never mind that plan. Um, well, we can try and sneak past them, or we can create a distraction. Um, you guys hear footsteps coming up the stairs, and it's like, Uh, sir? Um, are you alright? I heard a commotion, the guards were going, oh my goodness. 
Uh, you know, kind of works out the butlers finding the corpses of the guards scattered all over the place. Right. Uh, let's just go. We're leaving now. Let's go. I say we just go out through the front door. I'm going to jump out the window. <laughs> oh, right. How high up are we? Uh, 15, 15 feet. feet. Uh, you take two bludgeoning damage. I'll take it. Hey, Mortis. You Mortis on. is... Sorry. You land on the ground floor. Outside. And then can I sneakily run and jump over the fence? Stealth Gate check, because there are guards just out around the corner and see you. Oh, it's a little, it's more than 20. It's 20. <laughs> you just run up the gate and you're over the wall. That little fucker. Okay, um, I can just turn into a spider and sneak out of here. No one will see me. Yep. I'm not worried about me. How the heck are you guys getting out? I'm fine. I'm a spy. Uh, okay. Uh, how are you getting out, woman whose name I forgot? Uh, it's Satir. Satir? Yep. Um... I'll find a way. You can head out with me. Um, <laughs> sure. And, and you see, you see that Mortis has started now tying a rope to the window sill. Because he's not just gonna jump. That might take some time, and the guards will find might find you clambering down from the window. But it is nighttime, so you best be quick. And Falister's just like, ugh, whatever we do, just we need to get out of here and to candle keep as soon as possible. Mortis is going to watch for the patrol to go past and then drop the rope. Okay, he dropped the rope. Did I get the puzzle box on my way out? Like, did you give that to me? Or is it just like a, fuck it, it's happening now, bye, see you in the alley. You totally just ducked out without, like, because <laughs> I had given it to Falister. Ugh, oh, should have gotten it from Phalister. Anyways, you know Kels is just like impatiently tapping his foot in the alley, like, what is taking them so long? It's so easy. Alright, All right, Salen, you're next. Uh, I actually, I want to make sure that Satir can get out safely first, uh, because again, I can just spider. She's a 70 year old woman. <laughs> She's so old. Ugh, you know what? I am cunning. I can figure something out. And she starts, she just climbs down the rope. Hey, guards! And she starts running off. Surprisingly agile for a seven year old woman. Queen. Doof. And all the guards, she's hey! And the guards all like kind of rush after her. Okay, does she still I have that shield like on her back? A she little does. young for me? Oh, no, wait. Um, yeah, she does. And she starts. <laughs> She's got the shield on her back, and she just climbs down and just runs off. Mortis is very impressed. She's a little young for me, but, like, cute, right? Very cute. And Fallow's just like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm honestly just going to turn into just a spider and creep along the wall and head on out. All right, mostly mm -hmm. because of the distraction, you guys can get it without any, without any issue. You guys meet up with Kelsey on the other side near the bakery. What took so long? How's that sprained toe of yours? Oh, nothing. Feels like nothing. You know I had rope, right? Why would I care about your rope when it was only little drop? You're crazy. I like that, but you're crazy. So you guys are, yeah, you guys are standing by the bakery again. You have the puzzle box and um, we do yeah all right Falister. Yes. where do we have to go to drop this thing off um well what the candle keep it's just outside it's outside of the city mm. would they be would they take us now or do they want to wait they would take us most certainly now if we go um I said, do you guys have any business in the city to take care of? Nope, oh, this feels like correct path for me to be on. This was this was kind of our last thing. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Um, if 
Excellent. And he starts leading you guys towards the... On the map, we'll move the little pink square. Uh, it takes about... And then you guys have the flaming fist stuff still, so they recognize mm. you. And he escorts you guys after about... It takes about three hours or so to get to where you need to go on a foot. Okay. And it's, so it's probably about uh, 11 p.m. at this point. And he takes you guys to the gates of the outer city. And he, the lower city, rather. And he's like, okay. We are leaving Boulder's Gate. Everybody good? Yes. Good as I'll ever be. Yep. You guys push beyond the gates. Um, as the Basilisk Gate opens, um, Flaming Fist soldiers hold back the tide of Eltu Guardian refugees. You, cut, you guys can cut a path through these wretched souls whose wails intensify as the Basilisk Gate closes behind you. Well, uh, calm down. The refugees. Their city got sucked into... Hell. Hell. Yes, it's not great. No. I the think they're English. actually kind of underreacting. Honestly, if anything... Um, as, as he's walking... Um... Just without people paying attention, just, just like quietly, he's just gonna flip, just gonna pass a few silver here and there to a few different um, refugees until he's handed out thirty silver. All right, cool. And they all kind of like look at you with like just immense gratefulness, and they take it. Um, and as it, as the gate closes behind you guys, the dirt road cuts through the slums of the outer city, past the wall. Oh. Uh, not past the old neighborhood of Little Callum Shan. Uh, because Fallish is with you. Fallish is like, um, sp uh, before anything else, um, can we please stop at my home first? I have something that will help us get into Candle Keep. Um, oh. They won't they have the puzzle box. What else do we need to get into the Candle Keep? You kind of need. Candle Keep is a, uh, is a special place. Uh, they kind of don't let you in unless you have a book of knowledge that they do not have in their library. You give it to them and they'll let you in. Did we, uh, we took the, like, the book from... Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. But don't, don't worry, I have a book of my own to, uh, give to them. The sound, all right. Well, lead the way, if you need, re if you need to be recompensed, let me know. Excellent, and uh, he leads you guys towards his home. If I can find the uh, section about it, is alrighty. So yeah, you guys follow on this dirt road, uh, and eventually he leads you guys to. There we go. Um, Little Kalimshan, another walled city kind of just outside of, uh, Baldur's Gate. And he leaves you there, and, uh, brings you to his little home. Yeah, where does he, where does this guy live? Like, what, how does he live? Um, lives surprisingly okay. Nothing, um... Nothing, like, super mm -hmm. extravagant. Um, he leads to his home, and he kind of he grabs some weapons with him. Uh, and then he grabs uh, the book that he's looking for, and he's just, oh, just a book of recipes that they might find to a sword. Ah. Yes. Um, all right. Let's continue. Oh, and he also grabs a carriage and some horn to lashes some horses up to it and uh, says, just, uh, um, well, get on if you want to, well, want to walk. Don't want, if you don't want to walk. Sounds good to me. Excellent. Yeah. And, uh, he starts bringing the uh, carriage along and you guys she's steering uh, and after about a bit do we get a short rest during this period you do nice 
and uh, after about a little bit of time, um, two great bridges you meet a tall rocky island that rises from the middle of the Chianthar River. Uh, buildings and merchants stall lines the sides of both bridges, making it impossible um, to see the river from the narrow, congested roadway that cuts between these structures. Wooden broad draw bridges connect the two bridges to keep situated atop the island. The flags of Baldur's Gate and a flaming fist wave proudly above this fortress. Um, and you guys are on a carriage, hmm. so I will not have you guys make a roll. While he's in the carriage, Mortis is going to start flipping through the book that they found. Okay. It basically is just a just weird tales that about the world ending, huh. myths of the world ending. Nothing really standing out, kind of thing. All right, he's just gonna he's just gonna hold on to it for now. Okay. Um. After about uh, and uh. For a little time skip to make things a little easier. Um, over the past four days, the weather on so it's taking you guys about four days to get here. Oh, um, okay, fuck. So long rest too. Long rest in between and whatnot. Nice. Um, yeah. Over the past, so you guys would be taking shifts, sleeping in the back of this carriage, stopping along the road somewhere to get a bite to eat at an inn or a tavern, um, hanging out, having fun. Um, and eventually over the past four days, the weather on the coast way has gradually worsened. Dark clouds release heavy rain until the road runs thick with mud. You trudge on, passing by friendly merchant caravans heading north. On the morning of the fifth day, the rain subsides, but the dark clouds remain. Ahead, you see a path branch from the wider road. Heading to the sea, a raven perches solemnly on a leaning post bearing two signs that point like arms toward the west. One says the way of the lion, the other says candle keep. And uh, he takes the path um, along the way of the lion. Uh, and he says, oh, we should be arriving by mid afternoon. So... Candlekeep is not that way? Uh, it's where? Bear with the... Oh, wait, the things are pointing in the same direction. Yes. Okay, cool. And, uh, and Zoom, I'll post you guys a picture of what you see for Candlekeep. Wait. Massive now that's... city. Or not city, Sutherland. Um, and as you guys approach, the afternoon sun shines through the clouds to eliminate the gray walls and pale spires of a time-worn fortress that stands majestically atop a rocky promontory overlooking the sea. And the trail leads straight to it. And yeah, you guys are kind of going along the road to Candlekeep. Oh, wow, we're finally almost there. Yes, it's taken us some time, but uh, it'll be all worth it in the end. Longest four days of my life. So how long have you been working for the people at Candles Keep here? I wouldn't say I'm working for them, I'm just friends of theirs. Hmm. How long have you been friends of theirs for? Oh, you know, some time. You do a lot of business with these people? Um, not oh, a lot, uh... I just have a friend who's here. Um, I come as often as I can for information. Um, my friend Silvira uh, owns a laboratory here. She works in a laboratory. Uh, she is one of the most foremost sages of Scandalkeep. And she generally specializes in knowledge of the outer planes. She's very smart and she is the person we want to be. Um, she is the person we want to go to almost right away. Well then take us to her. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it. And eventually, you guys get to the gatehouse. And at the gatehouse, you're greeted by three monks in purple robes, a human, a shield dwarf, and a sun elf. 
Around their necks hang holy symbols of Denaire, the god of writing, whose symbol is a lit candle above an open eye. Oh, welcome to Candle Keep. Uh, the elf says in common. A gift is required for those seeking admittance. You must donate a book or scroll that isn't already in the library's archives. Please present your gift for inspection. And, uh, Felicer hands them the Book of Kalashite Recipes. And then, um, they nod to you guys. And, uh, the carriage is allowed into Candle Keep. Okay. And, uh, as you guys arrive at Candle Keep, that's what we're going to pick up next week. And also, when we come back next oh. week, we'll have a new cast member with us. And this is a perfect place to pick up a new cast member, especially. Yay! Yeah! That's what we got going on. So, uh. I did. We will be back next Sunday at 10 30 Eastern Time to sort of deal with Candle Keep. Uh. And, uh. Get right on the road to getting mm -hmm. into the hellish part of this adventure, so... Yeah. Wait, you mean it hasn't started yet? Oh, hell no. <laughs> and also, like, as we've been traveling this road, Salem's hair has just been, like, going white. And she's just looking, like, real pale, and, like, everything's kind of, like... Like, it starts with the temples, and, like, by the time you reach Candle Keep, there's, like, little puffs of wispy, like, you know, cold breath comes out, and she's just, like, all chilly. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we will be all back next next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time with the new cast members, so until then, Sweet. just remind you guys, uh, if you want to sign up for a campaign, you can for the channel. Hearts of Madness, we're still taking applications for that. Uh, and that's 7.30 p.m. on Wednesdays, Eastern Time. Applications close Wednesday. So, do it. And good night, everyone. Good night.